The E14 Gamecast is a production of Emotionally 14. For great podcasts, fantastic videos, wonderful blog posts, and much, much more, visit us on the web at emotionally14.com and enjoy content for the permanently teenaged. What's up, everybody, and welcome to the E14 Gamecast from Emotionally 14, Shock Horror. I'm your host, Rob Wade, and I'm joined, as always, by my pet rock, the incomparable and inimitable Blake Harmer. Well, hello there. Hello, Blake. Hello, Rob. How are you? I'm good. I've had a little break, and, uh, you know, people may have noticed the podcast have been less updated recently, and I took a little time off, and I've enjoyed it. Yeah, you had a little time to think things over. Yeah, absolutely. And now I'm back on the horse, and... Know how to horse. <laughs> I'm not sure what I mean. It, it, a horse with no name or just a horse? <laughs> sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, in a format experiment, while we're talking this evening, while we're doing the, uh, the game cast recording, we're actually going to be playing a game as well. And if I can make it work. So best case scenario, if you're on YouTube, you'll be able to watch a little bit of gameplay alongside this. Yeah. If, you, if it doesn't work, you can enjoy the dulcet tones of our voices and we've tried to choose games that won't detract too much from the discussion so it doesn't really matter if uh it you know, doesn't work it's or not going to distract like us yeah, too yeah. too heavily it's not going to be anything we're not going to be playing anything super story rich like uh you know like you say we were looking through the playstation it's like uh firewatch and what remains of edith finch yeah, and know. vanishing of ethan carter it's like yeah none of these are going to work are they are the tentacle yeah, yeah it's just not gonna yeah it's, it's not gonna fly no much as i'd love to play those at some point as a little you know they I think re- they're fine, but I yeah. also think they're brilliant experiences in their own right, so I'm not sure how I'd feel about... I must admit, I've avoided people doing Let's Plays of those sort of games, because yeah. I feel like... You'll spoil the story for yourself, yeah. if nothing else. Like, I mean, I'm kind of, I like, I've am i been watching a lot of Game Grumps recently. Okay. And, um, a fine program. Yeah, and they've been playing a lot of Phoenix Wright. Oh, okay. And I like those games. I yeah, that's the thing. I've never. I, I think apart from like playing like the initial tutorial on on the mobile version, I've that's never it, actually yeah. played any of the other levels. And now that they're going into the later stuff, I was a bit like, well, I'm either going to have to watch this and just accept that I'm never going to play this game. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah. Or, or you know, because I thought, well, any surprises are going to be ruined for me. And yeah, I, I can see what you mean. I, I'm, I've always been kind of. I've never quite understood the appeal of single player let's play stuff mm. apart from maybe I, I can understand it for people who are like i can't afford to buy the game i want to see how the story plays out i enjoy this person's content like you know i've i watched a live stream i didn't watch much of it because i just found it a little bit dry uh but i watched uh yahtzee playing i think it was heretic or some some really old pc doom style okay. game and uh, i watched it for a little bit and i can understand how if you really like if you really like yahtzee or like say Game Grumps or Yogg's Cast, if you'd like their stuff anyway, I can understand how you might be like, oh, well, I want to see the game played out and I think these guys are hilarious or these people are really good. So I'll quite happily sit and watch them do it. Yeah, I think it's more on how the game is that... It depends on the game for me and also I'm okay with people like, like you say, Yogg's Cast and Game Grumps because yeah. I find that they're talking enough crap that isn't really relevant to what they're actually playing that you can just listen to them and enjoy them without actually yes. paying too much attention to the game. Indeed. But, yeah, things like, um, like I mean, so when they've played, like, other games which I'll not be further about, I mean, they played through, like, Game Grants played through the entirety of um, Super Mario Bros. U or whatever, the, oh, okay. the one that got remastered for yeah. the Switch. Um, oh, there's the one that came with New Super Luigi U as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they basically they just game. did all the levels, but they were talking about doing it, and I thought, it's the sort of game that you don't need to focus too much, and it's not, but yeah. like you said, it's not plot-driven enough that it's too much of an issue. But, yeah. the same, you know, but I mean, on the other the other fly, that obviously you got stuff like that, and they're also playing through, like, Twilight Princess, and I thought, mm. well, Twilight Princess passed me by, so I wasn't that yeah. fast to play yeah. it, admittedly. So, you know, because I'm not, a big Nintendo gamer, but mm-hmm. I find, yeah, it, 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 so I'm okay with it, but I could see how some people who like quite wanting to play a certain game and might like, be going, oh, I've played it. every single Zelda except this one. They might yeah. go, oh, I don't really want to follow it because obviously it's going to be spoilers. Yeah, I totally get that. You know, it's, it's, 
I say I can understand the appeal if you really want to see those games play out and you can't afford to buy it for yourself, for example. Or I can see how multiplayer games can also appeal because they're just fun to watch. Yeah. But, you know? by, but by the same token, Game Grum seem to be choosing games that are either indie affairs that are more recent and obviously like throwaway fun and mm-hmm. playing it together anyway. Or they are choosing single player games and doing long term let's plays, but they are older games. Yeah. Because obviously, you know. I'm I'm well aware I've had my chance to play Twilight Princess if I really wanted yeah, to. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you're not going to be... And also, if you're sitting there watching a six-hour live stream, you're like, oh, spoilers. It's like, yeah, what, what it, were you well, doing here? Yeah, and that's what I mean. They're playing through the game in 15-minute increments yeah. you know, per video and talking totally. crap while they're doing it. So I'm more like, I'm more invested in watching them than I am. Yeah, fair game. enough. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, but we, we digress. So in terms of... In order to kind of minimise the distraction that we we know we've got while we're talking while we're talking and setting up, we've decided to go for Psionics's Rocket League, and that will start us off. So what will happen is, like I said, best case scenario, if you're watching this on if you're on YouTube and you come across this, there'll be some Rocket League to go along with it, and maybe we'll switch to another game in a bit. You know, we'll see how we get yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, for now there'll be some some Rocket League, and uh, if worst case scenario, if it doesn't work, then we'll, you'll just have a lovely chat about games, just like you normally would, and nobody's any the worse off for having tried this format experiment, so. Yeah, yeah. Shall we uh, set so, up some Rocket League? Yeah, so press start, Rob. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good sinking. Well done, Blake. And for some reason, I can't... Oh, yeah, you have oh, to... Oh, I've got that. I'll, you have to I'll sort out your user license agreement. I, so I have to scrub through it to yeah. say that I've read it, so... Uh, so we're playing locally, aren't we? Um, yeah, well, I am next to you, Rob. Yes, this is, <laughs> this is true. Well done. Uh, I think you have to press options to join, Blake. So oh, if you okay. could do that, that yeah. would be a grand. Okay, uh, I, I am here. You are there. Marvellous. Right, three versus three. And we'll just have rookie bots to start us off just to, for the sake of, uh, you know, for the sake of ease. I think that worked. I assume that put us both in the game. Uh, well, we'll find out in a minute. It had a little, <laughs> <laughs> it had a little button there, so I saw that. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. That looks like it's probably... I saw a little bloke appear, so I'm assuming that's you. There we go. Right, okay. So I guess, do we want to be on opposite teams or same um, team? How many team members have we got, sorry? Uh, three on three. Oh, okay. Um, I don't mind. We can go against each other if you want. Let's just play auto and see, where the, see what uh, see Freya has chosen for us. Okay, I'm blue. I'm orange. orange. Okay. All right, so it's, it was meant this. to be. It was meant to be. So, game um, on. Anyway, so what uh, games have you been gaming anyway? I've been gaming an absolute shit ton recently, and I'm really pleased about it because I've not had a chance to game for fucking ages. And I finally got, a, I've had some time to sit and do some PC gaming, which I've not done in absolutely yonks. Okay. Um, and just, you know, I've, there was a, there was an event on Steam. I don't know if you caught it. Um, I know Brad was, um, keen on the, the bit of it that ended up with Dead, Light, Dead by Daylight being free. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, but that was actually part of a much bigger event called Spring Cleaning. And uh, there was a feature of Steam that I think I really wish they would just adopt forever. And uh, I'll, t- I'll talk you through the event for those who aren't familiar. And the way it worked is uh, it was four days worth of event. And the idea was that you got more points the more random stuff you played out of your library. So it would generate you a bunch of games... Okay. And there was there was loads of badges. I mean, obviously, with every Steam event, there's badges, right? There's always badges. Fucking badges and hats and shit. Valve love their trinkets <laughs> for their whores. Um, <laughs> but, Steam will have its trinkets. Yeah, exactly. So um, there were badges for... One was for playing the first game you ever played on Steam, which, oh, okay. it, I God, mean, I will say I slightly cheated. It tells you which one it is. It doesn't just like, oh, right. I was surprise say, you. I know what that is. Yeah, it doesn't just surprise you. Um, but it does I did I will say I cheated slightly to get that badge because I all I did was open the game and immediately close it again in my defense it was Football Manager 2009 and I have owned about four different versions since then so I've you know the gameplay has come on in leaps and bounds since the days of 09 and mine was the first Lost Planet oh wow okay that is going back a few uh, yeah years well on. I mean I think it was the first time I actually it required Steam yeah to be played well that was it yeah i mean i played previous football managers and uh they didn't require steam and annoyingly i would have been able to probably track much better how long i'd played the game for um had there been steam uh tracking back then because i'm pretty convinced it was in the hundreds of multiple hundreds of hours for football manager 05 at the very least yeah because i remember i got through 15 seasons on one save game 
which is no mean feat because usually I last about a season and a half before I'm sacked, if that. One of the I played, I played um, the mobile version nineteen the other day because it was on sale, so I bought it on my Android phone. Oh yeah, other phones are available, and I think they had it on sale. And I um, got sacked within I think three and a half months of starting the season. And bearing in mind, you don't play any games for the first six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> you were amazing. Yeah, I was annoyed because I got oh nicely done. Um, I got I um, helped. <laughs> I got. Um, a win percentage of 42, which is quite high for a football manager, especially a, a rookie football manager, which is what I was at the time. Yeah, I yeah, thought 42% yeah, yeah. was pretty good, especially as I managed to last longer in the in a different save with a win percentage of 24%. And I managed to last longer than I did in my, in my save. I guess it was because it was a lower division club the second time around. Yeah. Um, so they weren't expecting me to win more than 24% of the game. But when it dropped below 24, I was totally fucked. Uh, but... So anyway, the badges. So you get one. You got one for playing the first game out of your library ever. You got one for choosing. They chose you a bunch of stuff you bought in the last six months and hadn't played yet. Uh, they also chose you stuff you hadn't played in six months that you've played a lot of. So um, one of mine was su- suggested was RimWorld. So that wasn't a hard one to sell no. me on because I bloody no. love that game. I know uh, Kat's obsessed with it. Yeah. Oh, but I think she's even playing it right now at the time of recording. Oh, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I believe it. You know, I've seen... I think she has the most stats of anybody on my friends list for RimWorld. Yeah. It doesn't surprise me I know it comes under either. up in my name, but yeah, I have not played it at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's a fun game. I think you'd enjoy it. Oh, I'm, I'm sure I would. It's yeah. just... Yeah, just... Not one I've got round to, that's all. Nah, that's fair. And also, you know, I've got to pry a cat off it first. That is also fair. <laughs> I've had to do that a bit with the Switch recently for reasons I'm sure we'll talk about. Uh, so, yeah, with it, so one of the badges w- that I was really happy with was the one for, I think it was just called um, Spin Cycle, and it was just a selection of six random games out of your library, completely random, so no logic to it whatsoever. Okay. So there was other categories, let's say, like, um, you know, I'll play ones that you gave a genre, you, ch- you picked a genre, you know, so I just found a game in my library and allocated it a random genre that... One that applied to it because I'm yeah, not a mo- yeah. I'm not a monster, <laughs> and uh, so I went and then just played something out random out of that, and I played. It just meant I played so many more games out of my library that I'd never tried before. Yeah, and I was really happy about that, especially because um, one of the games I played I ended up completing because I was really enjoying it. Mm. It was a point and click, uh, like a really old style point and click, like a classic style called Kathy Rain. Okay, it was given. A, I want to say it was given away free fairly recently. Um, on Steam and I think that's how I got it uh, but it was just really really good it was like a proper old style Monkey Island point and click oh good and uh, so you don't really get decent ones of them anymore no you don't this is true um, and you know it's a shame because they are jolly enjoyable games Land, come on <sighs> damn it you're going to get me bow ah, there you go you won well done you so, uh, yeah, for those keeping score at home, Blake just won. Blake's team won one zero after five minutes. And it, for those watching me, apologies. I, I think we were mainly talking. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. I mean, yeah, ultimately, yeah. we are focused more heavily on the game cast as, yeah, as is Because obviously right. this may not even work. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> you know. um, so there's that. Hmm. So I'm good to go for another game. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I... I ended up playing a ton of games and this Kathy Rain is like a like I said it's an old style point and click it starts off really innocuously it's just oh you're you go to um, your grandfather's funeral and then you realise basically pretty swiftly that some things are miss about the circumstances of his death and then you're like an amateur journalist and you just go off and in search of the truth yeah. and it all takes a very kind of it's almost like a bit Twin Peaksy. I don't want to say too much because obviously well yeah don't, you know, no, don't want to do Two spoilers, spoilers. Obviously, yeah. in case someone wants to play it. But, exactly. um, but it's well, I say it's well worth your time if you haven't already played it. And I'm pretty sure I saw it pop up on either the either the PS PlayStation Store or the Switch Store, something, as recently as a purchase. They played just scored again. This one took you 25 seconds this time as opposed to yeah. two and a half minutes. Like last to be time. honest, I don't think I actually scored the other game. I think it bounced off me. But. Ah, well, fair enough. Um, but that one was definitely me but yeah Kathy Rain so I finished that and I thought it was absolutely fantastic well worth your time it's very it's it's short but it's it's as long as it needs to be it's not yeah. overly fluffed up with extra bump fits you know you t- it's five in-game days 
and each day let's say it takes about 40 minutes to an hour to get through so it's not a long mm. it's not a long game but let's say it's not it's also not bloated as a result it's it's exactly what you'd hope for uh on so yeah on pc that's the main one i played that i really liked i've played a lot of like i played civilization beyond earth and i played some Transocean shipping company which i was weirdly mesmerized by because it's just one of those really sort of i can understand having played it now a bit why people like things like euro truck simulator okay because it's just really good like mindless hypnotic fun to just watch these things like watching little cargo ships go around the planet and mm. like just watching them you know speeding the keyboard up just to watch them go a little bit um a little bit you know get there a little bit faster rather yeah and it's just a really i say again a vaguely hypnotic kind of enjoyable game Mm. and then on playstation i haven't really played a lot because i bought jen uh shadows shadow of the tomb raider because she's a fan of the series of the especially the reboot series she really likes those and so i decided to pick up a copy for her so she could play because she doesn't tend to buy games for herself she tends to wait for me to pick up a, you know something she might be vaguely interested in yeah. i think there's a few games in um i took advantage of that three months for a pound game pass offer yes i did the same yeah I've, um that's been well for the past couple of weeks anyway that's been my main yeah, nice. thing i've been sort of rinsing through that to try and get as much money's worth of yeah you've done from what you described you've done pretty well i think yeah oh yeah i've definitely made my pound back already because yeah. i've already beaten well i know it's not particularly long but i did the uh storyline to um um, Storyline to Cox. That's a yeah, lot. Yeah. That's, that's, that's that'll be Rob's team. Scoring. Not particularly long. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, the storyline to Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, um, like, like a lot of beat 'em ups these days, so like uh, taking a page from like Injustice and Mortal Kombat, they've uh, put a story put a storyline yeah. in. It's slightly convoluted because obviously it's trying to explain why Marvel people are kicking the crap out of Capcom people, but yeah, it's it's fine. Um, yeah, I played through it, got through the boss was stupidly over the top like most beat em up games sure. uh, but it, it held my interest um, I can see why it got slightly uh, like, didn't, get, know, the best didn't get the best reception but at the same time I was a bit like well I'm not really paying anything for it you know? yeah yeah so, totally and I've already uh, completed Crackdown 3 as well I haven't so. finished that yet I've been playing it a fair bit because I quite like it but uh, I haven't finished it yet I've, I've I did a, a bunch of it when I first got it um, which is unusual for me because I'm usually one to sit there and let them fester in the corner but with Crackdown 3 I was like yeah I've got to get a bit of that in yeah I must admit I, I always feel like sometimes I go like you'd save a lot of money if you didn't buy games on days of release <laughs> it's very it's actually become increasingly rare that I've bought games on day of release for myself anymore it tends to just be uh, and it also tends not to I tend not to buy new games so much anymore either I tend to just trade them straight in and uh, use the vouchers to buy stuff yeah since I found out that you can use the codes online for CEX. I've been yeah. more inclined to do that because I thought, well, why have I got to sit there waiting for a copy of the game I want to come in? Well, quite, yeah. Just order just it. buy it online and it's, it's got to be in some store somewhere. Yeah. So, I mean, some the random last, store in Portsmouth the last or something. big game I've done would probably be Sekiro. Okay. Um, which I did get fairly close to launch, but because I was waiting for it, I was think I can't remember what game I was finishing off, but because I wanted to play that plus wait for it to come you know come down uh, get wait for a second hand copy to turn up nice. see i picked up like a couple of weeks later but just got again three go three goes to one one minute 26 to play Ooh. Ooh. um but uh yeah uh, i i mean sekiro i think is one, my, my favorite game so far this year I've okay played. I've, I've really enjoyed High praise so indeed far. i don't know what mine would be I played quite a few good ones as I as I recall. I haven't played a lot of games to be honest. I played a, I finished the campaign of Blood Bowl two. Okay. We oh, you actually it. finished it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's fucking nails. It's ridiculous. Mm. Um, but I did manage to finish it. Yes. Um, especially I, I sent um, I don't know, did I send? I've been sending uh, lots of update texts to my mate Paul. You know, obviously, you know oh, yeah, Paul. Yeah, but, yeah. Oh. Um, our favorite part of Midway. Best thing about Midway. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Um, but. I've been sending a lot of update texts to him saying like, no, of course, you know, I'm going to be one, t- you know, one turn from scoring and then everybody dies. Of course I am. It's Blood Bowl. Mm. Why would I expect that to be fair? But yes, I did. Despite that, um, it did take me a few attempts to beat some of the, uh, some of the semi, I think the semi final in particular was the, I want to say the Dark Elves and they're mm. fuckers. Like absolutely really, really, really good. And they're just impossible to, you know, 
to take down effectively. I blame the chaos. I mean, that's fair. Um, and then the final is Skaven, but it's Skaven who randomly um, turned into rat ogres, which Ooh. is tremendous joy. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why uh, our digital assistant of choice is telling me that, but uh, yeah. useful nonetheless. Other Alexas are available. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah I played I played Blood Bowl 2 finished that I finished the campaign oh damn it I just almost gave away a really stupid goal because all my players got jammed up together like Durr. Durr. Um, I'm I, playing football I finished the campaign of Battlefield 1 the World War 1 game as well oh yeah no I quite like that yeah it was alright I thought it was pretty good so um, yeah we had a little bit of a break and now I can't remember where we got to I think we're talking about Steam and uh, stuff. yeah, well, we were talking about the Game Pass, I think. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah crack, uh, obviously, I'd done like Crackdown and um, uh, Marvelous Capcom, yeah. I'm just gonna um, set up another game, some more Rocket League while uh, while we wait, so yeah, um, yeah, so uh, we, yeah, and I've, I've already got a few games to uh, I'm playing. I mean, at the moment, I'm playing a couple of like smaller titles, I'm playing Ruiner, mm-hmm. which is like a sort of cyberpunk y sort of hotline Miami style game, okay. I mean, I'm You've you've said some magic words for me there. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do realise that is the instant dong alert. <laughs> Whenever I mention a word, I put priapism. Yeah, priapismo. But uh, yeah, yeah, you're sort of being your brain's being hacked and forced to try and kill someone, but someone sort of stops you from killing them at the last minute. And How did you hear about? To, oh, right, the game. Yeah. yeah, and now you're trying to find out who hacked you and sort of okay save your family and stuff like that. I mean, that's I've only played like the very early part of it, so that's, okay. I don't believe that's major spoilers because that's literally the tutorial. Fair, <laughs> so, fair. Um, the other game I'm playing at the moment is a game called Manual Samuel. Okay. Um, which is a slightly comedic puzzle game where you play a douche named Sam who gets killed, uh, run over, but he gets brought back to life. But to order to win his life back, he has to he's, he has to do everything manually for 24 hours. Okay. So that includes breathing in, breathing out. Oh, blink, wow. Blinking. Ah, so, I heard so of, it's that a, does ring a bell. Yeah, it's it's um it's a silly throwaway fun. It's not mega hard. No, because I feel like even when you mess up, it sort of corrects things for yeah. you quite easily. So it's not like you can walk into stuff and it's fine. It yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think the emphasis is more on humour, yeah, rather fair than it being a, a, a you know a difficult game. Cool. But, um, I'm good. Yeah, I'm, I'm I've only done are. like the first five six levels, but I've been doing all right. Anyway, sorry. Yes, I'm ready when you are. I'll be blue team. Okay, cool. All right, All right. so let's... Uh, let's uh, kick some balls. Let's kick some balls around the With goal. The tire. And people get to... It, like I say, best case scenario, people get to watch how woeful I am at this. Yeah. Uh, and worst case scenario, stuff. not so much. Yeah. Um, um, and my secret is safe for another couple of months. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I, so far my Game Pass experience has basically been pretty limited to... Uh, I played a little bit of Super Lucky's Tale and I didn't really, didn't really grab me. It's, it was fine. I mean, it looked really impressive. Like, the animation style was very cool. I just, it just didn't really grab me at all. Yeah, I assume it's meant to be like children style platformer, isn't it? Yeah. Like a sort of, you know, like a kind Spiro-y. of spiro y, crashy, but not, it doesn't, it doesn't, like I say, it just doesn't grab me, um, no, which no. was a shame because I kind of wanted it to. I mean, it's one of those games I've been. Slowly playing through the Spyro trilogy myself. Okay, like, there were there were a series that completely passed by when I was a kid. Yeah, but I was, but I was like, cat liked them when she was a kid, so I was a bit like, oh, I'll get the yeah. I got an assist. Lovely, mm-hmm. lovely. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, I got uh, the yes, yeah, so I picked up the Spyro Reignited trilogy mm-hmm. on PS4. Um, enjoyed the uh, initial. Uh, sort of play through the first one and platinum that yeah Although, um, it wasn't that difficult to do really yeah um, it was basically collect everything and seeing as, it's, it. seeing as it's a game about collecting I didn't really see that that was much of a hassle no that seems fair because yeah, so, there were obviously not a lot of challenge if you were just playing through the game and then to, to, to get to the credits yeah no that's fair enough um, yeah and I got about halfway through the second one but then I keep putting it down to play other games yeah so yeah like Sekiro or um, mm-hmm. what a game I played off so it's gone I've got a, no, I haven't picked up Days Gone yet. I, I have a thinking... copy. I have a copy, so I haven't played it yet. Yeah, no, I was of the impression that I had a few, quite a few games I've not played, like um, I still got like Kingdom Come Deliverance, the first mm-hmm. series of Hitman. Yeah, um, I've still got that to play. 
I mean, I, I played a chunk of it. I think I got to like the third level and then kept no, get, finding myself in a bit of a hole. So I, thought, okay. I assume I'm going the wrong way, but it just not worked out. Yeah. Was. So I thought, oh, I'll have a break. Fair enough. I, to be honest, it's the most I've ever played of any Hitman game, so I think I'm quite proud of myself. I've played Absolution, I want to say, mm. to the oh, end. Oh, yes, you... Yeah, I remember you talking about that. Yeah, because mm. when I watched Jen play and she just strolled into the, ho into the hotel that you're supposed to be sneaking into, just like, do do do, hi there, here to murder everyone. If you wouldn't mind uh, just letting me do that, that'd be great. But uh, they didn't. They shot her up. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. Yeah, though. I feel like there's a bit more... I don't know. I always felt when I played the older Hitman games, I felt like it was very unfair with uh, getting spotted. I felt like I could do very little and just get spotted from the yeah. room. Yeah. And I was sitting there going, like, what did I do wrong? It's the thing about stealth games. They're not always very good at messaging what you did, where you, how you fucked up. Yeah. Well, if you fucked at up. least this, these newer, sit, like the, the episodic ones, or the newer, the newer Hitman games, yeah. I find they're a lot more fairer. Yeah. They're like, oh, yeah, I did cocked up. And yes, I'll have to restart the mission or whatever. Mm. But and also, it's a bit more fair in the fact that you can check, you can auto save at any point. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you might cock up the quick save, and then you'll be all right. Yeah. So if you if you do have to go and redo large amounts of level, it's because you forgot to do it. So. Okay. Well, yeah, I can see how that would feel a little less kind of egregious. And I think it does checkpoint after every after so much time anyway. Okay. So it don't. So I feel like even if you do mess up, you're not chucked back. Right yeah. at the beginning of the level again, over and over and over. Because mm -hmm. I think it was the sheer repet repetition and trial and error that I didn't like of Hitman. Yeah. So, yeah, and I feel like this one's been more designed for me. Yeah. But, <laughs> a bit more Blake centric. Yeah. And I think watching, going back to YouTubers from the beginning and watching outside Xbox play a lot of it, I think it's helped. Oh, I like their stuff. They're pretty fun. Yeah. But I feel like because I've watched them play it, I feel like, oh, I can see where they're going with this. And I, can, yeah. I can see how the mechanics work and I feel like I'm a bit more, mm -hmm. oh, yeah, I could do that, you know. Yeah. I mean, I'm still terrible. Sure. I'm, I'm terrible at stealth games in general. <laughs> um, stealth games and racing games are not my friend. Okay. So, um, but yeah, he said, you know, beating shit out of Rob and Rocket League. Well, it's um, not really a racing game. It's just <laughs> driving cars. It's not the same as... yeah. It's like G saying GTA is a racing game. If you're doing the racing in GTA and that only the racing, you're, you're fucking masochist. you're fucking uh, up royal. <laughs> nobody like likes my the least favourite thing about yeah, GTA nobody Five. Nobody likes the racing levels in a GTA game. And that's my least favourite part of GTA Five: the fact that you had to do some of the racing levels because otherwise it wouldn't just advance you through the plot. Which is a shame because otherwise I think that game's pretty much fucking faultless. I oh, finally yeah, finished that too. I mean, you know, I think I think GTA Five is. But actually, probably the best GTA. I think, I think it's it, fair it, to say the best. I think yeah. um, I, I do mean, like Vice City a lot. I, yeah, obviously I have the soft spot of it, but I was thinking on a mechanical level and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. obviously oh, five it, is so, so, so very good. Yeah, and, and it's practically faultless. I mean, I am less of a fan of uh, the most recent Red Dead, actually. Oh, really? I mean, don't get me wrong. It's good. It, it is a good game. Yeah. It, it, and it is, but I mean... I felt like it tried. I felt it was a weird, a weird criticism. I thought it was too big. I, I couldn't see that. San yeah. Andreas was the same for me. Too much micromanaging like, stuff and yeah. too big a world. And when I got towards the end of it, I was a bit. It wasn't like, oh, that was amazing, and it was a good ending. Yeah. But I was also a bit like, oh, good, I can play another game now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was a bit like, almost relieved it was over. Yeah, I felt like I'd been playing it for weeks and it was no sign of it ending. And yeah. I felt like a lot of it was. Wow, just I went straight past the ball there. Nice. Yeah. I thought it was unnecessary busy work and yeah. stuff. And overall, I think if I was to say which one I preferred, it would I'd actually say the first Red Dead. I think it's okay. overall a better story. It's interesting you say that. Right, I so. feel like I, I think it might have been Yahtzee Croshaw was saying that he thought this one had less of the soul of the original and it would be forgotten about way more easily in the long run. And mm -hmm. I wonder if what you're describing is that kind of... Yeah, Almost like a malaise around it. Like, it's just like, yeah, it's good, but it's just... I think it it's was... It's a lot. Obviously, you know, it, it was incredibly hyped up as a game. Sure. You know, every, everyone wanted it because the first one was so good. Yeah. And and that's why I'm not saying the game is not deserved of its high praise and all that. It sure. is definitely a good game. And obviously, yes, I, uh, if you don't, if you haven't played it, I, you know, I highly recommend that you do. It's um, in my cupboard. 
Yes. Michael, I have a copy. I lent you, you lent me one, and then I went out and bought one because it went down to twenty pounds, and it seemed too good to pass up for twenty pounds. Yeah, yeah, no. Uh, oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. I think I lent it because I thought, oh, something to do because I thought I was only going to trade it in, and then you were like, no, you might as well trade it in. Right? Yeah, because at that point, I noticed the trading price was dropping a little bit. Yeah, I think it did drop fairly swiftly. Yeah. Oh yeah, Devil May Cry. That was a game I played. Devil May Cry. Yeah. Okay, nice. No, no, I like that. That was good. That was. That yeah. was definitely better than Devil May Cry 4, which I think not hard. Better. That's a that's another one that's on Game Pass. That yeah. uh, the uh, the extended edition or whatever it's called, the special edition. Mm. Yeah, if the original, if the the HD trilogy was on there, I would have. Yeah, totally. Yeah, I'm hoping they. Uh, I'm hoping it's going to find its way on there. Uh, Blade beat me, by the way, so we're going to start another game up. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no big surprise there. Uh, oh, your blue as well. Yeah, I've got blue. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, in terms, let's say, I think I started talking about it earlier. So PlayStation wise, uh, Jen's been on Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which meant that this, I tend to have this, I have this weird fixation about using the disc drive when somebody else is playing on it. And I don't know why that is, but I do. So, um, Mm. I've lost a goal in four seconds there because of an absolute clusterfuck at the kickoff. Uh, I think I knocked it, but yeah, Poncho stole the glory. (sighs) What a a What a bastard. Yeah. Um, so I've been playing a little bit of digital stuff. I had to go at, uh, I bought it ages ago and never got around to playing at Everspace, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah. In like um, a freelance, freelance Elite Dangerous style kind oh, of okay. game. But, um, but it's, it's kind of like, there's I'm, a little I'm bit old of, hat, so I call that privateer. That's fair. <laughs> it's a little bit, um, there's a little bit of a gimmick to it, which I feel is kind of, oh, I've just realized I've just cut myself off from a certain goal there. Never mind. Um, it does feel a little bit that there's a bit of a gameplay hook that's I feel it's a little bit gimmicky but okay. I it makes some sense as to why the game's called Everspace if that makes sense like the the way it works but okay. it's, it's it's what I played of it was pretty fun I didn't play much of it but so far it was alright hmm. and then I played some Grim Fandango Remastered because I've been on the game. I've been on a kick recently for games I've beaten before and just want to play again I think hmm. part of the reason I wanted this 2DS which I got for my birthday is because um, it's got Majora's Mask and Ocarina of Time on it, and okay. I want to play them again because yeah. it's been long enough, and I don't have an N64. And um, obviously, they never did the, uh, they've never done the Switch update of the N64 Zelda's, or not yet, at least. Whether they've got any plans to, who knows? But um, well, I thought everyone was expecting it, but they they yeah. held back. They've not announced. Well, I bar this. Uh remaster of um, Link to the Past yeah I really I really wish they would just do you know the when they released the SNES Classic I just want them to take the games that were on that SNES Classic and put them on a card and release it as a Switch button as a Switch game like they did for the Mega Drive collection because I would I'd be all over that I got the SNES Classic and the reason I put it away again and got rid of it was because it felt like a bit of a gimmick and I wasn't using it. Whereas a Switch I play, I use all the time. I think that's the thing. I think if it was... My, and that's half the reason I haven't bought, uh, yeah. bought one of these minis because I've, you know, I'm, I'm all for that. And you know, even though I have a Mega Drive at home, I, you know, I love the, the Mega Drive collection, for example, yeah. on, my, on PS4. Well, I mean, it's not that hurt. Yeah, I got it on uh, Switch because I wanted the uh, ability to play Mega Drive games on the go, which is yeah. quite appealing. Plus Shining Force. Plus Shining Force, there you go. Which is always a, a great thing. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's one, one of the few games I've beaten twice. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> yeah, I can't think of many. Um, a game has to be quite special in Skyrim. my Skyrim. Uh, oh, yeah, I've not done Skyrim. I've done Skyrim twice. I did start... Oh, thank you for that. It's all right. Um, yeah, uh, the... Um, a game has to be very special in my heart for me to replay it. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I did start replaying Skyrim because I did pick it up on the Switch. Yeah. Um, but I must admit, I kept going away from it. I feel like... Because I have this thing where I'm a bit like, oh, I've got all these games I haven't played. Yeah. And I'm sitting there playing a game I have played. I feel like I'm, you know, I feel like I could be doing something else. You yeah. Know what I, mean? I sort of feel like I have to justify it because I've bought that game what feels like 106 times. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So there's a bit uh, of that that's to the it. Thing. I, Luckily, I've only ever bought it twice. <laughs> yeah. I bought the original 360 version, and then I had it on... Uh, I bought the Xbox One Definitive Edition, never got around to playing it, bought it on Switch on card, and then bought it digitally when it went super cheap. I think it was like 25 which felt like quite a good price for a digital Skyrim. Ah, got in there ahead of me. 
think um, I think it's a toss up between Minecraft or Doom as to how many times I've bought a game. Okay. Um, Minecraft. Oh yeah, Minecraft probably does win because I bought it on mobiles as well. Yeah, I would say mm. Minecraft probably just pips it, but I probably have bought my fair share of Dooms in the Yeah, past. for all the jokes about Skyrim being released on everything, they still haven't managed to find a way to get it on mobile. Yet. Skyrim Shelter. <laughs> I'm only a matter of time, I'm guessing. Well, there was that. Uh, did that ever come out, actually? Oh, Blades. The, or whatever it's called, yeah. yeah. I think it did, actually. I think it's out now. I've heard pretty good things about it, but I never actually got around to trying it out for myself. Yeah, no, it just sort of passed me by, and I thought, oh, okay. But, um, down there. Yeah. I thought I was going to get in there and get a goal there, but uh, Sundown got in ahead of me. So, this son for of a bitch. those who aren't in the know, we're currently at two all. So two so all for the those. closest game we've played so far. So far, it is the closest because the you've you've won all of the games. I think we've played three or four so far, and uh, you've won them all. And so far, I bet none of them have been especially close, apart from the one zero at the beginning, which mm. was yeah. Uh, yeah. I felt like I was lucky with the goal in the first place, and then after that, I was just. Luckily, you know, to play defensively. <laughs> it's, uh, it was lucky with the goal to start with, and then luckily I managed to completely <laughs> luckily, fucking spank uh, yeah. you in every subsequent yeah. game. I feel like I've got into a bit of a groove. I, I, I feel like with Rocket League, I have good days and bad days. Yeah. And even I though I would definitely not say I was I was a pro at Rocket League because I've seen some pretty amazing. Oh God, videos yeah. Some of the some of the tricks people pull people, off is yeah. nothing short of incredible. And if you're and if you're watching this expecting decent play, Rocket League play, you're going to be disappointed. Yeah, you're the, not already, and you've not already switched off. If you've never but, if you've never watched <laughs> us play Rocket League before on the previous videos we recorded with Mark, you won't want to again. You will. <laughs> just when you thought you'd seen it all, An absolute clusterfucks. He says literally second within seconds of bumping into his own teammate. <laughs> da. Da. Um, I'm in a car. <laughs> vroom, vroom. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? So, yeah, PlayStation-wise, that's Grim Fandango Remastered has been my limit. Mm. Xbox, I played Crackdown. Let's say it's been mostly Steam and uh, occasionally, uh, a, occasionally a Switch game breaks the Tetris 99 cycle because okay. uh, we both took advantage of that um, promotion that gives you some free Switch online. Oh, yes, yeah. And uh, we've been playing, both me and Jen have been playing quite a lot of Tetris 99 because it's incredibly addictive. And I literally found myself going like, right, I have to restrict myself to five or six games or I'm just going to play it all afternoon. <laughs> and that ends up what's happening anyway. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But it's very, I think it's very well done. Um, and I like, there's a lot of things I like about it that mean there's very I'm very kind of keen on it as a um, multiplayer experience so the things like the fact that you don't see who knocked you out you just see that you got knocked out you don't you don't know who did it yeah so that, like, you less, don't know who you're playing against there's less trash talk as in other games there's but. no from what I can see there's no voice whatsoever which is always nice hmm. I think it's a very interesting take on Battle Royale and I think it's brilliant yeah, a brilliant idea that I would never have thought of. So, I, I, you know, I think it's great. But yeah, I personally uh, found it hard to get into. But mm. Maybe, maybe I need to give it more of a chance. So. Maybe, yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those games you do. I struggled initially, kind of, to break the um, a certain kind of percentage of the things. But then once I hit, mm. I realised how to use. Uh, you saying about you weren't sure how to use the targeting. Um, once I've got a bit more of a feel of that it was a lot easier for me to get up into the upper sort of, you know, it's, it's, I'm not going to say I always finish in a consistent position because there are games where it's like 85. And it's like, well, that was a complete shit show. Yeah, I just feel like sometimes I start playing and then all of a sudden it was just bam, bam, bam. And I just thought, why, yeah. is, everyone, why is all other 80, 98 people attacking me? <laughs> it feels like it. But then you look at the, because there's a targeting mode that lets you focus on people who are attacking you. Mm. There's one bloke who's just really good at it. Yeah. You know. And I say bloke uh, in the generic sense, well, just yeah. some tosser. I don't we know, all know doesn't necessarily it, be a bloke. We all know it's a small Asian kid. <laughs> <laughs> Why does it always have to be Asians? There's someone in Japan that's just really, really good at that. It could well be, yeah. I mean, that's that's fair. They, they are a, or, a nation or, known or, for it. Or, or from Russia, well, I suppose. Yeah, it could be, yeah Russia could, be, could work, I think. They, they seem to have more of an influence on it on a cultural level and less so on a gameplay perspective. Mm. It's a bit like you know the. Um, I mean, obviously, I was joking about that. Like, it doesn't matter sure. about the the uh, whether Asian or not, but it just makes you laugh. Whenever <laughs> like, you see a video of someone. 
doing like say, say like Dance Dance Revolution or something like some that. Some insane thing. It's yeah. always it seems to be this small person from a town in Japan or something like yeah. that that just seems to be completely there's, acing this arcade or like mega certain, mode or whatever. There's something to be said for a certain. There's a certain kind of. It's like the the gaming equivalent of a death wish. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that and that may be down to the fact that arcades have still have more of a culture in Japan. Than yeah, it could well here. be. But yeah, incidentally, I love that you were like backtracking. It's like, yeah, obviously, I'm joking. It's like, yeah. like I'm not going to cancel you. It's, yeah. This is not the tw- this is. I'm I know not this, home <laughs> I know it's. I know it's current year, but I'm not. You're not going to get cancelled. <laughs> like, you know, I will shut this program down before I kick you off it. Yeah. <laughs> Shortly before, so you never have to say you were fired. <laughs> Such is my love for you and your rockers. Well, that's the end of the rock. I better get the pickaxe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> this is like, what's this, Minecraft? Yeah. Uh, we're not playing Minecraft. No. I suppose you well, could play you that could, split screen. multiplayer, but yeah. I think when we... <laughs> Let's be fair, we would just end up with going, right, it's been an hour, we've built a giant golden cock and balls. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Enjoy it. <laughs> Enjoy. And it can't go on YouTube. Cause yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> it's a giant golden cock and balls. <laughs> And we were doing it to pour some sugar on me by Def Leppard in the copyright flag here. <laughs> For no apparent reason yeah. we did that. Just a fixing things up montage. Um, I look forward to that thinking. Yeah, I thought um, so. But, um, what was I talking about? So, yeah, I was playing... Let's say it's been mostly Steam, a little bit of Switch, most a uh, tiny bit of Xbox, almost no PlayStation. Just almost none at all I've been buying games for it I I did play I know we've talked about it but um, I don't think I mentioned it on the air I bought Fire Pro Wrestling World because Mm. I'd heard nothing but good things about Fire Pro and then I hated it and I hated it so much that I went out and bought WWE 2K19 immediately after playing it because I, such was my dislike for this game I thought (laughs) such my love for indie wrestling (laughs) yeah exactly such is my desire to play this game that um, you know, I'm gonna uh, at least like WWE 2K19 is the devil I know. Mm. It's you know I know how the controls work. I know what sort of level of quality I'm gonna get out of it. I can expect a pretty solid amount because I'm not playing online. Uh, I'm not playing on Switch this time. I learned my lesson once burned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think there's still. Um, I think my AJ Styles entrance from when I played it last time is still loading. Uh, <laughs> on the switch yeah to this day. turns out they don't want none but it took me three weeks to find out <laughs> but yeah so I, I went I would dislike it, it's, it I, I'm sure it's a good game if you're willing to persevere enough to get cut as they say mm. um, but it's just there's no UI so you can't tell how you're doing like as in you can't tell if you're winning or losing or which bits of you are um, you know, if you're if you're worn out or if you're favouring, like WWE ha- always has like a sort of oh your arm's fucked and it's like a little picture of a red arm. It's like C three PO in Force Awakens, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you end up like at least getting an understanding of how your match is going, which is to say, in my case, usually not well. Uh, but Fire Pro has none of that. And uh, one particular match that stands out that was particularly egregious for me was I got no offense in all match. I got one, I think, like an armbar and passed out from the exhaustion <laughs> of performing that armbar and lost the match on TKO. I was like, what the fuck is this game? Like, hmm. I understand, you know, there's... Sometimes games have a kind of a hardcore following and you can understand why because they're, you know, they're just really into that community or whatever. But I don't know, there's something about it that just felt like it was intentionally obscure like everything just felt like it was a bit sort of gatekeepery like oh well you know you have to be good at this game you already have to be good at fire pro to enjoy this game and also previous fire pro games have had a really big roster and this one i think it might be i suspect it might be because it's got the deal they've got the licensing deal with new japan this time around so they've got proper new japan roster okay so it's like you can play as zack saber jr which is obviously all i did because I know somebody who knows him. Yeah. And, uh, you know... He dropped, he dropped that name here. Exactly. Not that he likes to bang on about it or anything, but... Yeah. Uh, I think he wrestled Jimmy Snooker once. Who, Jack Sever Jr.? Yeah. Oh, probably. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, the the roster is, is really small. Well, is that something to be that proud of anymore? No, it's true. <laughs> yeah. It's like everybody's next question is, did you kill the prick? <laughs> <laughs> no life did that. <laughs> he is dead, right? Uh, I'm pretty sure. If he's not dead, he's, in, he's, he's on his way. Yeah. It's only a matter of time, I'm sure. I thought he was... I'm pretty men- sure he's dead. I thought he was mentally fucked. If he's I'm, pretty, I'm pretty sure he's dead. Yeah. Um, you know, that's, that's the medical term. 
you know, not that we're happy about that, of course, but at the same time, dude probably did get away with murder. Uh, or, yeah. <laughs> or near as damn it. Hmm. Um, but I say just, I think I feel like it was one of those games that was designed not just not with new players in mind, but actually almost kind of in opposition to them. Like, we don't want new players in this game. We want it to be kind of obscure and gatekeeper-y and, like, bizarre. Because there's no, there's so much space on the UI. You could put all that stuff in. You could put some sort of, some sort of, even just a stamina gauge, just to give you a sense of, like, how it's going. You have to use a lot of the visual cues from, like, you know, watching your player, like, watching your character sort of struggle a bit, like, mm. tells you that he's knackered and stuff. Which yeah. is, you know, that in and of itself would be fine, but it's just the, it's the combination of all that stuff together. It just made it not an enjoyable experience to play. And it's a shame because I paid more for that than I did for 2K19. Hmm. And I've already had one match in 2K19 and I was like, yeah, I enjoyed this way more. Just yeah. because, like I say, it's, yeah, it's got it's, more it's UI cool. in the way and stuff, but at the same time, it's solid. You know, it's not going to light the world on fire, but at the same time, it's because obviously it's not No Mercy or the old or SmackDown or any of the SmackDown versus Raw with uh, GM mode because I do m love me some fucking GM mode more than anything else. I mean, I think the last one I played was 2K16. Okay. Because um, I think that was given away with gold. gold yeah. yeah, I seem to recall. I remember playing that for a bit and then going, wow, this submission system is absolute bullshit because it was that stupid one where it's like you have to get it lined up with the sticks in the box yeah, otherwise yeah, you lose yeah. the match and it was like I tapped out to a fucking arm drag or something like an arm drag <laughs> into arm bar takedown it's like Jesus I feel oh, no. weak I, I, I gave up with the main campaign mode like career mode with you know where you create a wrestler and lead him yeah. to glory mainly because I couldn't work out how to get back behind the ropes after I yeah. counted out without okay. and I got counted out <laughs> and I was like well this is a bollocks well, this sucks. This is, yeah this is bollocks yeah you know this has never been a problem in any other wrestling game no, to indeed. my knowledge yeah I do miss like I said I do find myself missing I was thinking about this a lot the other day because you know um, I mentioned it before that I listened to a podcast called R3 Cents yeah where they're counting down their top 100 um, Chris, one of the hosts, is a friend of mine from some for some years. Mm. Um, I believe you've met a few times. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, he recommend, he said to me like, "You should do your list. You should put your list together. Put your hundred together and play along." And I was like, "That sounds like a lot of faff." Um, this is top one hundred video games of all time. Yeah, yeah. That's a difficult. it is hard. So what I found was the other week. Um, I was uh, I had an evening to myself and I was kind of bored and not really sure what to do with myself. Now it's unusual for me to be bored, so I felt like there was going to end up being some sort of project. Um, and I ended up making my spreadsheet of every single game I think I've ever played. Okay. Um, ex except for Steam and PC because that's a minefield and that would take me a while. Oh yeah. 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 Um, incidentally, for those keeping score, I finally won a game. Yay! Four three. So that was a good. I, I'm happy to concede. Yeah, well, I was. You know, I scored two goals out of it, so I was. I, right. I was quite happy that um, we managed to pull it back just before the end. Yeah, it was. It was close at one towards point, the end. It was like, oh god, squeaky buttock time yeah, towards the end for yeah. sure. But uh, yeah, I did manage to hang in there. So yeah, um, yeah. So I did. I did make my spreadsheet, and I've and I realised I've not played that many games. I'm actually in the grand scheme. I've played... There's a lot of games. If you were to go back and look, I've probably logged a lot of hours on certain games. Oh, yeah. But in terms of actually playing the game, like playing a, a, a large number, it's actually quite low. I remembered having... I could have sworn I remembered having loads and loads of games on, on my... Certainly on my Nintendo systems growing up. Hmm. And I picked up a ton of PS2 games and I had a bunch of uh, GameCube stuff. Not as many GameCube things now I think about it. But... I had, so, I felt like I had so many games growing up, but then when I made the list, it was like, oh, that's not as many as I would have thought, you know. But uh, there you go. I mean, I've not done the hundred. I will say that because yeah. I think that's a much bigger project. I think the trouble I would have would be an actual order to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it's how you like, rank uh, it out? Because I, well, that's the thing. I might have an easier time if I did like top 10 by genre and then doing it that way maybe and yeah I, know, I can't it, when they do their top 100 in my three cents do they uh, do it in a specific way or well, have, how do our three cents do it they yeah. they do one episode per number oh okay. so they there's three of them um, Jonathan Chris and Minty 
and they go around one one each and they both do they all just do like oh this week it's on number 77 and this is like oh right and each three will talk about their 77 yeah so they'll each have their place to talk about whatever yep, they exactly oh, exactly right okay. yeah so they just do that basically and that's their and their that's the whole thing greatness and all that show, yeah so yeah. why they like it because also it's sometimes like, and actually one of the nice things about their show especially is um, much like when we talk about games we like there's an element of like oh well it worked for me for whatever reason hmm. But then it's not necessarily that it was a good game. It might just have some sort of personal significance. Hmm. Like, I mean, obviously, I never finished James Bond Jr., nor would I have ever done so. But had you know, had it been a game that I was like, you know, if I'd been in the situation, which some people are, which is fair enough, that I only get one game per year, hmm. I would have convinced myself it was good because that's what you do. Oh, I'm sure there were some games that. I put way more time into as a kid than was probably worthwhile. Yeah. Well, I have suddenly been back and played Dark Cloud, and I suspect that's probably because I know it doesn't date as well as I remember. I, from someone who'd never played it and only picked it up when it recently hit the PS2 on PS4, yeah. and it was fairly new uh, on PS4 store, I, I liked it still, but I found it very repetitive. Yeah, it can be. I think even then I was sitting there like, I used to use a lot of games as an excuse to listen to music along with it and I would listen to the same music over and over again as well. So I think it was just, I was all right with repetition back in the day. Son of a bitch. Well, that was a really soft goal. <laughs> I'll take just, it. I seem to just jump over the ball, I think. What is yeah. It? That was, that <laughs> felt like it, that seemed like it was unfair on you there. I feel like it should have rebounded off you, yeah. but uh, I'll take it because it was a goal for me. So Yeah, no. And I don't just mean my team, I mean me personally, which is nice. <laughs> Not often I get those. <laughs> Beat Blake achievement a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, they coded that into the PlayStation. <laughs> Who knew? It's actually into the system hardware. It's not even an achievement for the game. But uh, yeah, I did. So I say I did make the I did make the spreadsheet, and there were. I was kind of surprised by how relatively few there were because I feel. But then at the same time, I'm not entirely convinced I got them all. Because I'm sure there's going to be... I mean, also, there's a lot of games... Like, I didn't include FIFAs because who keeps track of which FIFA was the good one? Like, um, WWE, yeah. it's easier because there's things like, oh, you know, they've got GM mode. I know that game. I know which one I played there because it was my... GM mode was my favourite yeah, thing about SmackDown vs. Warrior 6. I also think marketing-wise... Pretty sure Warrior 6. Well, that's the thing. I, I think for, like, football games, for me, I... Because I don't care about... Yeah. The no listing. I don't... I don't like football writ per se yeah so I'm not bothered about doesn't make you per se <laughs> but <laughs> by the same token I don't have yeah so I'm happy I still like the odd game of it with yeah. friends so I'm happy to pick up a one that's like two or three years old for about a fiver in a yep. store and I'm happy to just upgrade every two or three years you know yeah I, I mean I did the same thing with um NFL 2K3 on the dream, on the GameCube or the PS2. I bought it from a cheap shop in Canterbury. Okay. Uh, Second hand, it was like three or four pounds. It wasn't expensive, and I just played that. And I think I tried to get who was the team I was playing as. I don't even know. I know that my um, ice hockey team in games is always Tampa Bay Lightning, okay. because I just think it's a nifty name. Hmm. I think it might have been... I may have tried get ta- to get Tampa Bay Buccaneers, maybe? Right. Or something like that? I'm not sure. Hmm. But I, I'd probably... Annoyingly, I'd probably know the team if I heard the name mentioned, but I don't know NFL teams off the top of my head. So, you know, understandably so, because I have no interest in the sport. And I think that's the thing. I've never really gone into NFL games because I've never really been interested... Well, as I say, I don't have... Uh, I don't really know enough about the sport. And I'll just go, there's not enough orcs punching shit. Yeah, well, this so. is true. I mean, obviously, the the, other, the only difference, though, is with the NFL games, you do feel like you can win a match occasionally. Whereas with Blood Bowl 2, like I say, it was, a, it was an unusual... <laughs> Turnover. Yeah, it was an, uh, unusual for me when I was like, oh, my God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to win. And not only did I win, I won 2-0, which was, unusual, which was really yeah. unusual for me. Um, and scored one goal in each half, which, you know, is kind of my tactic when it comes to Blood Bowl try and score more goals than the other person preferably throughout the whole game <laughs> I re- as strategies go I think it's searing <laughs> but yeah I, I was uh, I was pleased about that because it's much like um, FTL finishing the campaign of FTL I want it to believe 
that it's something that you wouldn't believe I'd done until you saw it. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 well. You still haven't, you still don't believe me at that. I still haven't got anywhere near to be, I think I've blown one side off of the mothership. That's the best I've ever done. Yeah. It took me, it took me a few goes to, to blow the mothership apart in FTL, but I did manage to do it just in, just about in the end. Yeah. I, I think it's also a game I don't ever put loads and loads of time into, and I think if I wanted to beat it, I'd have to put loads. You, loads of I ended up having to become very methodical about how I did stuff. Like I just had to basically just increment up and get slightly better every time. Hmm. And that's the thing. I think with a game so random, you can have really, really shit runs. And there is that fault. It's a bit like how I gave up with like Enter the Gungeon in the end because I was like, it's a great game and I love it. It's very fun. But yeah. I, when I worked out how to actually get the end game, I just went, that's freaking impossible. Yeah. Or, well, it is possible, but it is so the chances of you having a good enough run to do it mm. is so low that I was just like, I'm never going to beat this game. Yeah. So, <laughs> or not enough to put enough time into well, beating it. One I think minute be... to make a goal back. Oh, baby. Yeah. It's got intense now, hasn't it? It has got rather yeah. intense. Both no, got no, a little bit like, stoic. We've gone a bit... Ah, ah, damn it. Oh, there you go. Luckily, my defence is paying attention. Because I sure as hell wasn't. Did my stupid flying kick shit. Yeah, no, I completely missed. So. Yeah. That's often my result of my flying kick shit. It's weird I think of a car as doing a flying kick, but, yeah. you know, such is my stupidity <laughs> and why I'm banned from most forecourts. <laughs> <laughs> I bought my car. Is that all right? <laughs> Vroom, vroom. <laughs> no, yes. Ah, right, that's probably a bit beyond doubt. Yeah. Trying so hard to get a goal. No, that was a good game, one at the other end. That yeah. Was a good game. Well, it's not over yet. Hang on. 13 seconds. 13 left. seconds to score three goals. Yeah. All right, then, Mob. Come on, then. All right, well, let's, re let's uh, reorient ourselves because this is obviously not much fun for the people who aren't watching the video version, yeah. if there is one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after all this, we are like, oh. Babe. Oh, God. Well, then. you would have loved it. Yeah. <laughs> It's weird, it's just flashed a load of Nazi symbology on the screen for no apparent reason. There must be a weird bug. Maybe yeah. that was what the patch was for. That I just keep yeah, not yeah, letting it download. <laughs> 11.4 oh. gigs to just remove a swastika from a flag. I don't know. I don't know. Do they do that? Probably not. Uh, well, I don't think they have user created content well, in Rocket I, I, League. I like to hope that's a day one patch. Personally. You would hope. Yeah. And also, let's be fair, a meeting. <laughs> Whose fucking idea was this? Okay, our game's released. Oh shit, you didn't take out the anti-Semitism. Oh, for goodness <laughs> sake. Barry. <laughs> Do you buddy... Oh, I thought when you said anti-aliasing, I thought you meant anti-Semitism. Yeah, I just left it in. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Typical Barry the bloody Nazi. We should have seen this coming. <laughs> <laughs> bloody, bloody IT, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But uh, <clears throat> are you, is there anything... What are you? What's next on your playlist? Um, playlist. So, yeah, games I'm looking for forward to them. I do want to pick up Days Gone eventually but mm -hmm. I'm happy for it to come down in price Yeah. so because I think it won't be that far off now I don't know must admit, I don't even know what it's down to now so don't know so, but uh, I can't imagine that but I mean um, I'm trying to think what's coming out in the next couple of months uh, oh Mario Maker 2 I might pick up I was tempted by that I found myself um, quite tempted by um, Mario Maker on the 3DS Okay. So having got the 2DS, hmm. I've been uh, eyeing up a lot of eBay games because uh, they're cheaper. Yeah, yeah. Way cheaper. In some cases, anyway. Um, and I'm finding myself increasingly looking at uh, Mario Maker as a possibility, but I might wait for the Switch version because I feel like I'd get more mileage out of that. I was thinking I'd never played a Mario Maker. I don't know, obviously, because they were on the Wii U and 3DS, obviously, didn't yeah. really own them. But uh, the... I've enjoyed watching videos of it, and whilst I wouldn't necessarily be probably that good at creation, it's a bit like Little Big Planet in that sense. I feel like the the campaign that teaches you the stuff that looks interesting, mm -hmm. and the fact that obviously, like Little Big Planet, there is plenty of creative content there, so that even if you never made a level, there's there's plenty of keep you busy. You you're not going to run out of stuff levels to play or anything. You can like be a that, consumer so. for a while, which is fair. Yeah, so I feel like even though obviously, like a lot of Switch games, it'll be fairly it'll be fairly pricey if I was to buy it. Uh, really, yeah. You know, it's, it's not going to go down in price. It's probably going to be 50 quid for forever. Yeah, but, that's true. Um, at least I feel like I would at least get my money's worth, if you know what I mean. Yeah, totally. Yeah. But, um... Is there anything on your pile that you really want to tackle next? Um, 
Well, this is the thing. I feel like at the moment, I feel like because I've got this game pass, I want to get my money's worth out of that. So I feel mm. like I'm like... Three months worth three of months just playing of random that, stuff. Yeah, I feel like I'm going to be doing that for three months. Yeah. And it may fair. come to a point where I'm partway through it and I'm going, no, nah, bored now. Yeah. But I must admit, there have been a few games that I've been meaning to go back to and finish and then haven't. So uh, yeah. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is one of them. Because mm-hmm. I got about probably about halfway or two thirds of the way through it and then just put it down. Okay. I think if Red Dead came out, I think that was like... That seems reasonable. Um, yeah. Uh, I never finished Detroit. Okay. Um, never started that. I've do. never really got... I, I really should have no excuse on that front. I should, you know, because I can't imagine it's a long game. No, I don't think so, it is. It's a David so, Cage after all. Yeah, so I feel like I'll do that. Um, I would... There's... Um, with wow. uh, ga- games to play with because uh, I, I find that me and Kat like to play through games with certain types of storyline or whatever yeah sometimes they can be like the short evening ones but mm-hmm. it's just something that we can play together like I can play she can watch and she likes the plot well, that was a comedy of errors for that know. second goal wasn't it <laughs> bad yeah just all of us bouncing over it and then one solitary CPU player just donks the head over yeah. the top and just knocks it in wanker um, was uh, yeah, so obviously we're doing Hellblade from the games past at the moment, mm-hmm. which uh, obviously had great things. And from what I've played of it so far, I'm really liking. I've heard but, it's good, but obviously with PS Plus giving up, what remains of Edith Finch, and um, uh, we've got other games that we've never played, like uh, Last Day of June and stuff like that, which are like little games which I know aren't particularly long. Yeah. But I feel like I should play, if you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, because it mainly because they're not that long. Mm. Yeah. <sighs> Ooh, I thought that was going in. I thought I was. That was as well. Ah, well. Yeah. So in terms of like, so Mario Maker Two is the main thing. Um, and then... In terms of recent releases, I must admit I can't. No, I don't know what else is coming out on the on soon. I mean, there's still no actual proper date for Gears Five, is there? No. Uh, November, I think, is the most up to date we've got so far. Okay. Apparently, they're going to be showing that off in some significant form at E3 so I'm looking forward to that more hard date I mean I mean do you have any specific E3 predictions that you want to be announced or anything like that um, I think cool. there'll be a Switch Mini or something equivalent to there'll be like a smaller like a smaller one well, like I, a I'm hoping it's not moulded controllers hmm. to make it smaller that would be I feel like that would be a, a wrong a misstep well, you mean actually fixed to the control? Yeah, like rather than having Joy-Cons, you just have like a one with a fixed no, position I thing. I think the whole point of a Switch is the Joy-Con, really. Yeah, I think you're right. I hope that's the case. Um, I think they'll be very bad on their part to do that, especially when they've got things like Labo and that, which is heavily dependent. Very on true. That's, that's a really good point, so I actually. I think that would be a very big design. I'd like to see them announce some more stuff for Labo, actually. Oh, that'd, that'd be, be cool. Goal. Um, what was the other one they're going to do as well? Um... Pokemon Sword and Shield looks pretty cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. A bit more about that would be nice. Um, in terms of the big two, I so it's big two, I mean, Nintendo and Sony now, isn't it? But uh, Fortunately, Sony hasn't, isn't doing E3, so... No. My chances of uh, Last of Us announcement... Is, um, Slim to none, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> I, I just want that... Well, I mean, they don't have to do a heavy announcement. We already know they've wrapped up the acting and yeah. they'll be doing fun and finishing touches. So yeah. I'd like to hope... They'll be working on. They'll be doing a release date soon. That'd be good. Uh, but uh, that, yeah, that's my. I mean, Death Stranding. I'm not. A, I'm, I'm not massively about fussed about. Um, but I mean, it's one of those ones. I'm like, oh, if it reviews well, maybe. But yeah, I'm happy to wait for reviews before I make a judgment. If mm-hmm. you know, it's not like a pre. I, I find in this day and age, I don't see why people pre-order. To be honest, no. I, don't really think there's much to be gained from it and I feel like a lot of publishers exploit pre-orders so yeah and, and really shoddy products that you walk right into um because there's been so many stories of it like with you know uh, Shadow of War or Battlefield or yeah yeah Battlefront I mean or whatever but mm. Yeah, I mean, the microtransaction stuff, obviously, there's a lot of discussion about that stuff. I mean, I'm, I, I'm not the best person to ask about these things because I understand why they do it and I don't really have a problem with it as long as I've got the options and not need them. Oh, yeah, I mean, me. I, I just don't choose... I choose not to. I don't... I, I understand why they do it, don't get me wrong. Yeah, I, mean, I just it's, feel it's like... To make. Uh, yeah, but at the same time make your product good and people will buy it so true yeah it's or the then, other part of it. but I mean having said that I mean I remember reading somewhere that uh, football ma- bear in mind football manager is the 
is the supreme ruler of football management games, right? Mm. It's it's outstanding in its field. Yeah, yeah. It still gets pirated by like twenty five percent of the user base. Oh, probably. Yeah, I mean, I understand like PC retail prices have gone up it seems a little bit because now it seems like it's 40 pounds always without exception uh, yeah which is frustrating PC gaming seems to have gone closer to console gaming in terms of pricing yeah but then at the same time pc gaming goes into sale way more often so i'm not so bothered about it oh yeah i mean i haven't even i mean have you downloaded epic or not really bothered with it i what the game store yeah yeah i did just to get the freebies so far yeah so I don't, I got I free admit, i've not really part. looked at it i was sitting there going I thought there's enough on my Steam library I've not played yeah. to, for me to be looking at new PC games at the moment. But. I wasn't going to do it, and then I they saw I saw that they were giving away Thimbleweed Park as one of the things, and I, I wanted to play that because it's a point and click by, by Ron Gilbert. Yeah, I have. I must admit, it's on my pile because I've got it on the iPad, but I've not yeah. played it. But I bought it at like Christmas time and still not done it. Yeah, uh, yeah I think I bought that in like Donut County. And, um, okay. I think I beat Donut County in about an hour and uh, <laughs> yeah. played the other ones. Uh, yeah, it seems to be. It's, uh, well, I mean, I'd love to say that I had a huge hand in this, but it's because I've been like, pretty much I feel like me and you have been quite ineffective, and it's mostly been the AI. It's been the rookie bots of. that have really been schooling us on yeah, uh, how yeah. to play this. <laughs> but obviously, uh, I know you said there was a new Watch Dogs about to be announced. I mean, I yes. like the other two Watch Dogs, so I mean, I'm happy to. I'll happily look into that. Yeah, well, the rumbling is it's set in London as well, which would be kind of cool. Hmm. I always feel sorry for what's doing because I feel like oh, it, won't, it should do better than it does, but it never seems to be as successful. As yeah, it's one of those things. It's a really nice... I think the part of the problem is a lot of the Ubisoft games, especially the new IP, the first game tends to be a proof of concept that then gets kind of... just feels a little little bit lacking. Not 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 rubbish, but just doesn't quite feel like it lives up and then the second one ends up being really good because mm. they had the same thing with um, what was it Assassin's Creed yeah, yeah Assassin's Creed 1 was like fine but a little bit repetitive and you know in places a little bit boring and second one fixed a lot of the problems that the first one had you kind of do the, the polish exercise the second time around and go oh, okay yeah. well here's some new gameplay and also we've made we've tweaked the stuff that people found annoying and I feel like Ubisoft... I mean, there's a lot of game companies that struggle with that, you know, but uh, I feel like Ubisoft are especially... I suppose because they do a fair bit of new IP. So that happens, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean... I've heard I've, decent things about The Division, but I still found myself just not wanting to be... The, I'm not I, that bothered about getting I, it. So. I've come to the conclusion after Destiny that... And playing little bits of other games like Anthem and... yeah. Uh, you know, I've come to the conclusion that those games just aren't for me. <laughs> no, that's fair. I mean, I, I've sort of come to that conclusion a little bit after. I mean, it took me much longer because I played an absolute fucking ton of Division. Despite, I, I have this thing about there's games that I'm like, yeah, but it doesn't really feel remarkable to me. But then at the same time, I've played like 50, 60 hours of it, like Destiny, Division, other things beginning with D. Other games are like oh, that. Oh, yeah. I mean, when I did play the original Destiny, I did sink in a fair few hours. It was only... But I can't speak for some of the people. They must have put in, like, hundreds of hours into Destiny 1 and bought all the expansions. I mean... Guessing so. I bought it when it came out, played it fairly solidly for a good few weeks, mm -hmm. and then it got to a point that I was just like, why am I doing this? Yeah. I'm levelling up to get a bigger gun that, to kill the same guys over and over. I felt like I was just doing the same three or four missions over and over and over again and uh, that was what turned it off for me. Yeah. I was grinding for the sake of grinding and mm. I was just like there's no point I'm not enjoying this. Yeah totally I, I, I get exactly what you mean. Like, I mean yeah uh, if the DLC had come out a bit faster I might have persevered with it but it, it dragged its feet and then they wanted month, lots, quite a bit of money for it and I was yes. like no sorry. Yeah no I, I totally get where, you, where you're coming from. Yeah. Um, I found myself kind of I mean, with the Destiny stuff, I did do it just to kind of get... Partly because I wasn't entirely enthused with the level of storytelling in the first... In the main game, so I thought, well, maybe in the de in the other stuff. I'd heard that in the other stuff, they'd done a bit of a better job in doing some of the character work. Hmm. And it was better. I wouldn't go as far as to say it sort of redeemed the whole game, but it was still... I mean, I... I, I will say it was probably the better telling story with the more the gameplay I just didn't really bother with much beyond completing the actual story and no gr no real grind mm. whereas with the uh, main game I 
finished the story and then just spent a ton of time uh, grinding out, you know, yeah, one of my yeah. characters. So unfair. <laughs> that shot I did right at the beginning was so good. It was it good. It was the best shot I've. In. It's the best shot I've ever seen not go in. Yeah, it's the best. Goal, <laughs> it's the best goal I didn't have. <laughs> it's the best so, goal you've never scored. Yeah. Yeah, and then just to then lose it after that, I was like, God's sake. Yeah. Fucking rocket league. <laughs> Why do I this play game. this game again? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> because it's not that distracting and we yeah. can play it while people <laughs> listen to us talk. <laughs> um, what are we talking about? Uh, my hatred of Rocket League. Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 it's not a bad game. Oh, I, I, it's I'm fine. Joking. It's fine. I mean, I'm ultimately... I'm just getting salty because I did that good job. I never feel like... There you go. I never feel like um, when I played the game, if I lose, it's like, who cares? It's not really a big deal. Oh, I don't see myself as a, a player I, who takes this very seriously. Oh no! If I didn't like losing, fuck me, I wouldn't game at all because I lose fairly often, hmm. especially tabletop. Well, I mean, yeah, as I said, I I, I never get, I never get to these people that get so angry at games that they want to throw their control at the wall or anything like that. No. I personally just don't get that because I think I take my dad's approach, which is I can have the last laugh. I'm going to turn you off. Yeah. <laughs> and it, what, to some 14 year old kid in. Wichita, you know, you can turn him off. You can stop listening to him at the very least. Yeah, he's, yeah. A, he's a human being. You can't turn him off. That's murder. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, especially with a kid, that feels slightly over the top, you know. Hmm. But uh, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't really see how people get that aggressive. But I've known some people they'll be completely fine with certain games, with most games, and then but it will be a certain type of game. You know? Yeah. Like, uh, I know someone who's, like, really bad with, like, football games, for example, mm -hmm. like, to the point where he now doesn't play them anymore because yeah. he knows how yeah, angry it makes him. And I thought, that's quite interesting. Yeah. I'm not really... I've never played... You know, considering how many bloody Soulsborne games I've beaten now. But yeah, well, maybe you're just conditioned to... To hate. Not be, <laughs> not be cross about anything <clears throat> just because you've had your... Because <coughs> you've hit your... Uh, you know, your limit. I mean, I've seen people get irrationally angry about really weird stuff. I was on the train today, right? I realize yeah, this yeah. is the, normally the wrong podcast to tell train <laughs> stories, but so it goes. Crazy. I mean, game, game here. here. Um, <laughs> I was on the train today, and this bloke went into the um, toilet to use the toilet. And then this other bloke came through just after he, the other, like it's a younger bloke and an older bloke. Shit, I wasn't paying attention. Um, I'm just sitting there, looked like a pillock. <laughs> <laughs> he just been lobbed <laughs> just because you weren't really oh, oh a ball yeah oh fun um, I met one of them I scored one of them one of them just a minute ago wait a minute <laughs> yeah. uh, but I was on this train so I was on this train and this um, this younger guy went into the toilet to use it and then this older bloke comes sort of shuffling through into the carriage I, I got the feeling he was shit faced and it was like either that or he was like a you know it's not it, it, maybe he wasn't shit faced today but he spent enough time that uh, he looked the part yeah, yeah. If you catch my drift, um, and he was stood outside the toilet, and he was obviously getting a little bit wound up at waiting for the toilet to become available. It got to the point where just before it opened, he started kicking the door, oh. and then this bloke, this bloke walked out, didn't acknowledge him or anything, just carried on. Yeah, yeah. And the uh, and the second bloke went as if like motioned as if he was going to headbutt him. I was like, what? Like, what did I just watch? This is really weird to me. Like, I just found it very, very surreal that somebody would get so upset because the toilet was in use and you really needed a pee. If you need mm. a pee that badly, then sort your of, sort of shit out like an adult. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just, it was very, I, I couldn't really, I didn't really know where to look. It was very odd. Mm. It was, um, I mean, I knew where to look. I ended up looking straight forward yeah. and seeing it. <laughs> But um, I think it was because he knew he was going to miss his, uh, miss his stops. I think he was supposed to get off at the same stop as me, and he didn't because the train was... He was too busy pissing. He was too busy pissing and being an angry, drunk-looking man. Um, well, did he, like, the guy go stop, like, stop, like, dark out? No, he, he, he did it sort of, he did it kind of, um, you know how some people do it when sort of somebody's walking away, they sort of make a motion that they know the other person can't see? Oh, okay. So he sort of did it in a way as the guy was sort of turned away and walking off so, already. So, so it's like, just like a sort of yeah, oh, prick. walk and show him. So yeah. like, you won't know, will you? Because you would you had your opportunity there and you didn't. Yeah. And you know, you're probably going to piss yourself <laughs> if you uh, take the time to sort <laughs> that out. I'll beat the shit out of you if I wasn't drowning. I'll beat the shit out of you and I'm covered in piss. <laughs> <laughs> it's like all the functions. Well done. Somebody want to come in and have a wank as well and round the trifecta off? <laughs> 
very strange. I didn't, I didn't realise there was a special train trifecta of using the loop. <laughs> I assume so. I've never partaken of one of those three. I'll leave you to guess which one. I think you'd be pleasantly surprised. I've... Well, I've, I think I've only had a wink. I've never... I think I've not had a choice before. and yeah. been like, yeah, I must have a wink. Busting. Yeah. <laughs> Bust I just don't know. It's just going to shoot through the roof. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just like... Code to that scary movie. Yeah. <laughs> just not a wax dart. Um, <laughs> just kill the nearest commuters. <laughs> Ah, uh, well, there are days where killing the nearest commuter feels like perfectly reasonable behaviour. Mm. <laughs> but then I remember that I'm a functioning adult and you're not allowed. <laughs> Much to my chagrin. All right, so I'll tell you what, with 30 seconds left of this game, I'm going to say that this is probably going to wrap it up for this episode of the E14 yeah, yeah, Gamecast. Yeah, yeah. We've had a nice little, you know, it's been a nice little catch-up. We've been able to get back into the back into the groove That's a little fair, bit. Yeah, we've heard what we've been gaming, yeah. we're hoping to game. We've um, hopefully seen we'll us do a little gaming. Looking forward to E3. Obviously, we might hopefully be able to do another show soon where we can discuss E3, I suppose. Yeah, that's why not. Yeah, that's always a good thing to talk about because obviously that's when 90% of all the news comes out. Well, indeed, yeah. And I mean, you're also going to see, probably, I would say, it's fair to say, you're probably going to start seeing less is more from these podcasts Hmm. because they just tend to turn out better when less is more. Yeah. I think. And I mean, the game one, you probably, if you're going to see more of one of the two shows, it's probably going to be the game cast because there's always stuff to talk about because we're always, we've always played something. Yeah, yeah. Or we can just talk about other things, you know, like related to games. But um, if you've enjoyed the E14 game cast and hopefully, let's say, ideally you've got some video to go along with it, but if not, hopefully you've enjoyed um, the E14. Our unusual game cast would define it with the odd, oh, fucking hell. In which case, you're like, you know. uh, But if you've enjoyed the show in general, the audio version regardless of what you know what accompanies it or doesn't then uh, you can subscribe via all the usual methods so youtube spreaker itunes um other ones yeah. i forget spotify that's the that's the one yeah, spotify yeah. that definitely works um and you can uh like and subscribe there and you can obviously rate and review anywhere you want uh if you want to interact with us on social media we're on facebook at emotionally 14 twitter at emotionally 14 uh, Instagram at emotionally14, emotionally14.com is the website where it all happens, obviously. And uh, you can enjoy podcasts, videos, and much, much more on emotionally14.com. Blake, social media, where might people find you? Um, so you can find me on Instagram at Harm of the Appreciator, on Facebook, where I lurk under my normal name, or you can find me on Twitter at Fuck Blake. But is there a point? Probably not. No, that's fair. I mean, uh, so if you want to slightly less uh, pointless Twitter then I can be found at Rob Way Vision uh, and also on Twitter, uh, Instagram as well on the same address and if you're dealing with Emotionally14 on Twitter and Instagram you're probably talking to me too um, I feel like that's the only things gaming related that's right uh, yeah well, obviously we've got a game cast um, obviously they're incredibly old now but we do have the old we other do have YouTube some videos video, on there. YouTube yeah. videos we've got some videos um, obviously there's also because obviously Gamecast does cover uh, tabletop as well we obviously got um, our there is stuff like the older E14 toy box video. Yep, um, Fire When Ready. There's obviously Fire When Ready. Here at UK. Here at UK. Yep. Um, yeah, but I think that that's what covers most of our tabletop needs. That's but, good I mean, stuff. Is there anything you want us to see talk? I mean, if this worked, is there any other games you want us to play while we're talking crap? There uh, you go. Because yeah. that's another way of dealing with it. Yeah. Um, anything else you want us to chat? Stuff? Any questions you want to throw us? Obviously, you can send it through the yeah. uh, usual address so yes yeah, so you can email podcast at emotionally14.com or you can tweet us at emotionally14 um, join one of the Facebook groups or pages and uh, send a comment there and uh, you've got all these options available to you so why would you not yeah and um, that's it right yeah I think that's, that's it. it sorry it's, it's alright we're, we're a bit rusty it's yeah, fine yeah, we're allowed yeah. we I, was bit, well, no, I was literally going oh should we mention Broadside and I was like no this will probably be it will be out by then yes, yes. Um, so yeah. well I hope you enjoyed Broadside if you came <laughs> <laughs> and if you didn't then you know I hope well, you enjoyed well. whatever you did instead enjoy your spoon exactly <laughs> <laughs> anyway thank you very much for listening to the E14 Gamecast I've been Rob, your host Rob Wade I've been joined as always by Blake Harmer and until next time Bibbidi Bop Games <laughs> I suck at Rocket League.